expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL. However, you're allowed and encouraged to like and share them on social media. In fact, subscribe, share, and like The Sue Ellen Sanders Show on WPSL-TV on YouTube. And now, the host of your show, Sue Ellen Sanders. Welcome to The Sue Ellen Sanders Show, and we're so glad you're here this weekend. Um, It is... uh, we're all the way into the end of October now, and the next time that we talk, it'll be November, and there's certain events that we're used to taking place in, in November that kind of had to pivot along with the rest of the world. So I'm really glad to have with me today Tom Jones, who is the executive director for the Education Foundation of St. Lucie. And we're going to be talking about how they have pivoted their annual dinner and auction that usually takes place the first week in November. And then Tom is also going to be talking about some of the programs that the Education Foundation does. Now, the Education Foundation, of course, is a nonprofit organization that is the uh, nonprofit arm of St. Lucie County School District. That's right, Sue Ellen. And first of all, I'm really glad to be here. It's been a few years, so thank you so much for uh, reaching out. I really appreciate it. Uh, Yes, the Education Foundation was created actually 30 years ago this year, August of 1990, and it was created by the school board and civic leaders. Uh, one of the ones that comes to mind is Ken Pruitt was on I was on the board at first, so it goes way back. And uh, the purpose was there was legislation that came out of uh, Tallahassee in the late 1980s authorizing one education foundation in each county. And uh, so it's, it's not really a franchise, but each county has one foundation. And when our charter was created in 1990, we were created as a DSO, meaning a direct support organization of uh, St. Lucie Public Schools, and that's what you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have only uh, one client, which is the St. Lucie Public Schools, and our charter is to uh, further the uh, academic academic, uh, achievement of, of students. So it's really quite simple. Mm-hmm. And uh, but that's a big job too. It is because <laughs> there are a lot of different elements that go into that goal of furthering the academic opportunities of students. Oh, you're right. It has a lot to do with the teachers and helping the teachers in terms of their uh, their th- their skill sets. They're ha- training their materials. Absolutely, the training the materials for the teachers it has a lot to do with uh, the different programs. So what we do is we coordinate with the district staff. Uh, work with their uh, annual plan and then uh, what I actually do is I raise money through the private sector and then uh, we have several programs that we run every year. Uh, We actually follow the school calendar so um, our summers are I wouldn't say they're they're not busy because it's a planning time and a time to start getting ready for the year but we really start to uh, work on our programming in, in, in when the school district starts 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 in August. And, of course, one of the biggest fundraisers we have each year is our Evening for Education uh, celebration. And it's a celebration of public education, and it's a way for us to raise money for the programming for actually the following year. We already have the funding that's ready for for the current school year, but it's a way for us to create the the funding source for the following year. And um, so we launched that, and we're actually one of the first uh, nonprofit events uh, coming out of the of the of the uh, of of the summer so the first thursday of every november for over 20 years 21 years now we have uh, held our um evening for education celebration going back i've been with the foundation i'm on my sixth year but i was on the board earlier than that so i have some memory of the uh of the evening for education celebration back in the day well and i do too because i was on the committee back in oh, the day okay well there you go so you know ba- how back in the day of bridget abernathy yes. and beth hoskins yes and absolutely and i'm still yeah. in touch with beth yes. uh, quite a bit me too and i think you were probably served on the board together i, I yes. can't remember we yes. did yes. Yeah. okay so that was the heyday i'll tell yeah. you uh it was almost always held held at the pelican yacht yeah. club very elegant it had a theme uh-huh. it was black tie and gowns and they raised quite a bit of money, and it was their only fundraiser. So back then, the foundation was sort of part-time. And uh, what happened was the, they would raise all the money they needed 
for their teacher grant programs, for scholarships, mm -hmm. and for the Teacher of the Year Award. And then they would uh, sort of rest during the summer, still plan, but the offices weren't open full time. And now it's more full time because the pace has picked up a little bit. And, you know, through the years, of course, uh, the executive directors have included Beth was the first That's uh, right, paid yes, executive right. director. Mm -hmm. And then Kim Phillips. Yeah. And then uh, Kathy, I do not remember her last uh, name. Uh, was it Pam Houghton also in there? Pam? No, she was uh, on the, uh, she wasn't. Uh, uh, she was the president, the volunteer president. She was the president. president. Right. Um, and then, of course, Jim McKenzie uh, yeah. it was uh, the executive director and then, then, me, then me, yeah. yeah Jim was actually a very dear friend of mine and um, when he passed very suddenly uh, it was a tragedy for all of us but I never really thought about the the, the foundation even though I, I was on the board for, for several years and then someone uh, you know, reached out to me and I thought it was a good fit because I wanted to um, continue Jim's legacy in the programming. You know, Jim came on at a very critical time. Uh, if you think about it, Jim came on when we were in the, the economic downturn, the first one in the early 20th century. Well, let's see, 21st century. So I would say around 1998, 99, and 2000. And he spent a lot of time rebuilding it. And just as it was going, he passed. So I wanted to continue that momentum and uh, yeah, and so we had done that, and uh, I'm very proud of that. And uh, but Jim left a really good legacy for me. So he sort did, of and and Jim, I really um, made the connection to the business community. Absolutely. For, uh, in in the past, a lot of the connections had been through the education community and through the teachers and trying to build a campaign with the teachers and and the community in general. Um, but those connections with the business community, which you have furthered very well um, with your, your mindset, um, because having those voices on the board of directors and having those um, people involved in the planning have helped you cement those relationships. That's right. And we're blessed, I tell you. We have so many lo businesses, either local businesses or national businesses that have local offices here that really care about this, this, this county, really care about our children. So it's not a hard quote pitch for me you know it, it's a uh, you said yeah well you you always do it and you always work hard but it's not difficult because people understand the value uh, of of helping our children uh, a couple of things that that our board has done in the past couple of years is that we're focusing on early literacy there's a whole body and studies that say that you know as early as four years old and certainly by five years old which is kindergarten if children are taught the pre-literacy skills the socialization skills that are necessary that that really helps them out the district knows that if you don't read proficiently by the third grade you have a 75 percent chance of not graduating from high school so that's where the bulk of our mm -hmm. dropouts come from so i back that way up and said look what's the earliest point that we can touch them and you would know this with the and that's early exactly learning coalition. It, yeah All right so i, I bleed a I'm little birth bit through five absolutely and yeah. i bleed a little bit into the the four-year-olds through mm -hmm. pre-k but certainly at the k level and so we've started some programming that really focus on that on that early learning for literacy and then of course there's math and science and uh, uh workforce readiness and and uh, um, we tom and i have talked and we plan on on further in the relationship with the early learning coalition and the education foundation because it's it's a no-brainer being as you know you were talking about how soon the the learning process begins and actually the learning process begins at birth but by the time a child is three or four uh, about 80% of their brain is developed. Well, you're correct. Which Actually, is you're, like, you're right. whoa! Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're correct. It, it's almost uh, fully developed. And here's the bad news. If the brain is not completely stimulated at that very young age, the brain wants to self-edit uh, things that it's not using. 
So if the brain you is not, it, you, you, you lose it, you yeah. lose it. So you, you need stimuli. And mm. just to tell a little real quick story, uh, you know, going back in the 1850s when kindergarten was formed, that's a German word meaning children's garden. Now, a garden back then didn't mean a, a flower garden or a vegetable garden. It meant more like a park that had stimuli for children where they could play with uh, swing sets and seesaws and things like that and socialize. And that started in Europe and it came to the United States in the mid 1800s. And that formed our, our, uh, our common curriculum for kindergarten for a century. Sometime around the 1990s, with all the testing that's going on, kindergarten changed and all the play sets came out of it. So play, the purposeful play part of kindergarten is sort of gone now. And I came across an um, education foundation, actually it's in Martin County, it's our, it's our sister organization, and they created a program, I call it Play for Purpose, mm -hmm. where we're bringing those play sets back into the kindergarten. The district wants it desperately. They want these children to be able to work in social groups. This is pre-COVID, and we have this COVID issue, <laughs> and we know we're gonna work through this, <laughs> but we're moving forward on the pilot testing and working right, on this, right. and we wanna bring that Back. Beyond so, COVID, yeah, yes. beyond COVID, we want the children to have fun at the at the uh, at the five year old level, be able to socialize and give them that comfort that that they can begin their pre pre reading skills. And testing has shown that that socialization has a lot to do with phonics and and how how children speak and the and the words that they form, and so that makes them read better at an earlier stage. So uh, I'm very excited about that. I've got some seed money for a program. So we're going to launch this probably next year or the year year beyond. But we'll have enough money to build these these kits. You know, that's so very exciting. awesome. I'm really excited about it too to see how we could connect in the those younger ages as well. The idea of purposeful play is something that you know, as you said, that we've kind of moved away from because of having. The, all those standards exactly that right. the exactly kindergarten right. yep. uh, students have to meet. But at the same time, there's a lot of things in that birth through five-year-old age group. Um, we call it, have you heard of the three T's? No, the three I T's no, program? Tell me about it. Yeah. It's actually um, something that we're working with through PNC. Um, and the three T's, the TRW um organization so the three t's are talk more take turns and third t. Uh, and t wait, wait t t take turns talk more and what's that third one is the c connect um but the whole purpose is that even when you are working with, even when you're changing your child's diaper on the changing table, you could be talking to them and you could be saying, okay, uh, boy, that diaper was really stinky today. And, you know, what do you think we're going to do today? What would you like to do? Or you could be sitting and uh, watching TV or reading a book, even though your child is not talking yet, you could still be saying, you know, what does the cow do? The cow exactly, goes, yes. you know, you're, you're so right the, so well, yeah. all, all of this. Um, so it's purposeful. So it's not just purposeful play, but it's purposeful work, too, when you're in the grocery store and right. you're saying, you know, okay, which milk should we get today? Do we want the one with the red label or the blue label? And even though your child may not be able to say red or blue and they point, they're still learning Right, you're so, exactly right. So Actually, it's so exciting. Some of the themes for the play sets will be, uh, let's help at home. Just exactly, exactly what you said. Exactly, yeah. You know, we'll iron, we'll change diapers, we'll clean the house, you know, as a team, you know, or as a family. And another theme might be, you know, let's, uh, let's run a pizzeria. So we have to have someone that's a customer, a cashier, a cook, someone that's an owner. And we have all these play sets that we bring out and the children begin to play in, in social groups and they learn how to interact and all of that. So it's all good, you know. So Do you remember, and you and I are close to the same generation, but there were different things that we did when we were growing up, when we were very young in our families that were like games, like you turned clean up into a game. Right, and yes. then when it's we- called structured play, right? Right, you mentioned right. That, yes. and, um, and you connected the music. By the way, it's 
Tune in, talk more, and take turns. Okay, the there three you go. Twos. Got it. Okay, great. So it's, it's, you know, be aware of what your child is doing. And those, of course, are things you can do whether your child is two or whether your child is 22. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so that program is, is, is yeah. being seated. Okay. We're working on I'm that. so excited to yeah. hear more about well, it. Well, thank you. And then we still, uh, we still sponsor the science fair. Now, it'll be very different this year. It's going to be virtual. I mean, we'll still have the ceremony. We'll still have the, all of the displays, but they'll be in individual separated uh, areas, and they'll be more like a, a Teams type of a, a Zoom Teams type of a, of, uh, of a celebration. Okay, so students will still be able to display them, and they'll still be judged. So the essence is still there, but uh, we won't, they won't all be in one big room. So that's still there. We've sponsored that for over 20 years. So the display uh, will be there, and then the children will be on zoom well yeah so they'll Is build it? a display and then they'll, uh -huh. they'll, they'll show it okay, okay on zoom like i okay. gotcha so okay. there'll be different uh areas to do that they're all separated uh, remotely right maybe in different schools i think i'm not exactly sure but they'll still hold it the point is they're still going to have a science it's fair still going to happen have it it'll look a little bit differently so we're still doing that uh, we're still doing uh, our virtual uh, dinner, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But we're also still going to do our Night of the Stars, which is a celebration for the Teacher of the Year uh, and the uh, First Year uh, Teacher of the Year, the uh, Distinguished Minority um, Educator of the Year. So those categories are still there, and uh, we're developing the funding right now. That will be virtual as well, but it will be uh, still a, a ceremony. So all of the... Uh, um, the uh, candidates will come up socially distanced on a stage with the audience being virtual. So, so, so it's, it's a matter of, of figuring out the, the, the husk of what you need to do and then figuring out how, how you can be virtual around it. Right, it's really so the, the essence of, of the what essence, we're trying exactly, to Exactly, that was the word I was yeah. looking for. Because the thing about going up on the stage when you're one of the candidates or when you are the t teacher of the year for a certain school it's the academy awards it for educators so. and it it's is. really something special it's a red carpet ceremony so it's nice that you'll still have the opportunity for the educator to get up on the stage and the audience would just be Virtual. virtual and we'll probably have some people there at the audience maybe benefactors mm -hmm. and uh some uh some of our uh some s some other people but we, we just just being worked on now but the essence is still there it That's is awesome. very much so so uh the year is moving along uh, a little bit differently in the execution but certainly in the in the in the purpose of it, it it's pretty much we're pretty much on target i also want to say that you know, COVID, I think, has been a challenge for all of us, but the community has really come out. I think you would see this, too, in in uh, your 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 life. But uh, businesses have really stepped up and and really supported those causes that help help our children. Well, it, it's interesting that you say that. And, and I, I will attest that that's absolutely true. But there was a kind of like a two to three month period of time where everybody was kind of waiting to see what was going to happen oh there was definitely a pause right and, was right. No doubt about and it. um then then it was kind of like in the wizard of oz where all the uh the people in the land come back yeah, out come, again right, poking their heads said, out yeah looking around yes that's what I, I think very I much that's like. a very accurate thing what happened <laughs> yeah. was it was like this big thing hit us and we all sat down and kind of looked around uh -huh. you know but i'll tell you early early on two things happened the school district uh moved very quickly to distance learning and they had to mail all these packets out to the students they and they did. were and they didn't have the money for the budget so they reached out to me i reached out to the children's services council they chipped in we chipped in we didn't know what our budget was going to look like for the next year, but I said, look, this is mission driven. We've got to yes. write this check. So we did that early on. Then I had to go out and tell people that we wanted to raise money to uh, replace that. But at the same time, we knew that a lot of students didn't have laptops. The school did a great job of making sure every household had one. But, of course, many households have multiple children. Yeah, if you so, got three or four kids, you right. can't all take turns on the laptop. Right, exactly. Because so, you won't be able to get your day's work done. That's exactly what was happening. So we we jumped in very quickly. And uh, this was during the time everyone was sitting down. Yeah. But I was out there saying, look, I need to raise money. Well, we were able to raise, in a relatively short time, $25,000 and be able to... Uh, 
to give laptops to those households that needed additional laptops. That's so, that's so them. incredible. So we were still yeah. very busy l last summer. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, and, and um, a, a, as everybody else kind of came out and got used to that this was going to be business as usual right now mm -hmm. um, and that we we couldn't be on pause, that we had to take action. Of course, in the school district, they had to take action right away because first it was an extended school break and that was gave them another week but not only did they have to prepare the families and the children for distance learning but they had teachers that they needed to train in all aspects it was a big big deal yeah a lot of a lot of good work. and they did a great job they did they really, they really did. did um it was it was definitely a difficult situation but you know and and especially since it was a situation that was happening all over so it wasn't yeah. like you oh, could yeah. say, hey, we're having an issue here. So, hey, you people in Kansas, can you help us? Because they right. were having right. Everybody this, It was yeah. rolling across the nation. Yeah. Right? Everybody was kind of and looking around. And across the world, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, crazy times. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's nice to see. And, and as we move forward um, with the, as the pandemic ebbs and flows and ebbs again and flows again, um, we kind of start to see what's going to work as far as both fundraisers to bring in the funds and, uh, as you said, doing what is necessary for the children to succeed, whatever that entails, whether it entails more teacher training, whether it entails more student scholarships, um, whether it's uh, teacher recognition, materials for schools. You're hitting all of the high points, absolutely. Yeah. It's all about, you know, at the end of the day, the scholarships for those students that are moving on, but the teachers need a lot of support. They, they do, they need recognition. And that's, a, and that's the purpose of Night of the Stars, to recognize yeah. excellence in the school district, you know, and it's just an honor to watch, to learn about so many candidates. You can only choose a few that, that will win, but uh, there are so many, you learn about the excellence that's in the school. It's really true. Teachers work so hard and they take money out of their own pocket. I'm so glad that the state has begun to fund more in ter terms of teacher salaries and, and the district is, tr is working on that as well. So uh, I, I really think that uh, things are turning around. And at the school district itself, I mean, they're, they're really changing and growing and they're more student centered than ever with some of the programs that they've come up with instead of just teaching to a book or to a test they're teaching to a skill or a possible uh job opportunity um and that's awesome it, it that really is you know the one thing that i've noticed i just look at how the school operates but they're very metric oriented which is good i mean they look at every single student they watch their performance and as soon as a student falls off just a little bit they tame that student mm -hmm. it's no longer oh well we'll wait for johnny to catch up and they know instantly based on grading that's input daily okay into a massive database and the teachers look at that i actually gone into a school you see the whiteboards and then they're just jam-packed with data and uh the, the teachers and the administrators are data mining that for the benefit of the students so no student gets left behind. You jump on that student immediately, support them in a caring way, find out what, what, what their needs are. And a lot of times those needs uh, uh, may come to the foundation because like for instance, we're building a sensory room for special needs children because it takes a lot of, of, of resources to to uh, to care for some of these students, mm -hmm. but if we have a resource room where for students stressed, we could bring them into a resource, a sensory room that give can them calm, the give them the time out yeah. and calm them down in a safe environment. Right. That allows the core class to continue, mm -hmm. okay? But then it brings the student in back into the curriculum as soon as possible. And we piloted that la last year. It worked really well. It's not very expensive. It costs about four thousand dollars for for the room. So now we're doing another one this year. That, that's really great. So let's go over some of the, the ways that the Education Foundation, the programs that they have that give back to the school district. There's the Night of the Stars that you talked about right, that, that is educator recognition right, and rec support staff too. Right, exactly, it's support staff. We have a category for uh, the, the staff people, okay? So we have a Teacher of the Year award and then we have a, a, another award for the uh, district staff. 
So it's equal award, you know, it's a non-teaching mm. position, but it's someone who's, who's um, in, in the staff position that, that's really helping out as well. So that's the big one for teacher recognition and, and teacher support. And then we also do scholarships for graduating students. Uh, our scholarship program is actually 50% on academic achievement and 50% based on need. We look for those stories where a student has done well but has really struggled to get to that level and graduate high school. And they want to either go to work and, and graduate work ready, but go, go back to school, say to IRSC or Kaiser University uh, during the, the, uh, the, the night. And then we would be there for a scholarship or they move on, you know, uh, focused on, on a career. And so that's I've, a big thing for us. I've really been blessed to probably for five years or, or more, I served on the scholarship committee. Um, and I was one of those people who looked at, because you have people from the community and people from all different walks of life who, who sit on your different committees. Um, and um, I got to, to see, and, and as someone who is a former educator myself, it was great to see the kids that, you know, there were different committees that were set up. So each committee got to go through a certain amount of scholarships. But the number of scholarships you have, the opportunities for kids, and the kids that you get to say, and I say kids, but a lot of them are young adults. I mean, they're, they're mature. I know in the past we had, we had one young man who was actually homeless. Um, and when we figured that out, you know, as the, as the committee looking at his, his application and his information and his grades were so far superior. My poor kids were in high school at the time and I went home from that committee uh, meeting saying, look, you have all the support of your family right. and your home. You have everything you want. And look, this kid has nothing. Right. And right. look what he yeah, has and we, accomplished. Yeah, we, we try to find those students and recognize them. It's very, very important. We had a student also that we knew was living in the in the lot behind Walmart, the, and the school bus would pick him up every day. And that student, they would be able to go to the to, to the gym and shower and eat a, eat a free lunch and breakfast and all that. But uh, that application came to our table too. Good student. Yeah. And that person was abandoned by their parents. You know. And uh, we. Uh, the school district actually has a, a homeless uh, a homeless uh, program, program, and we actually are a benefactor of that. Very Kylie, big. Uh, Kylie Fury. Fury. It's a yeah. it's a homeless yeah. program. It's federally funded, but we are the organization that provides the hygiene kits. In fact, I just got a grant from St. Lucie County for ten thousand dollars to build hygiene kits for the homeless students. So is that, that's something else you do. So yeah, the, yeah. And really in the big picture, you're kind of an umbrella organization too, because you see what the needs are and then you fundraise to get the money to meet those needs. Right, but, but we're, all, we're focused on students and of generally course. on academics, yeah. you know, so that's our charter, uh, p um, public students. So yes. it's sort of limited, that's, that's that DSO designation. But uh, yeah, but anything that, that supports the student and helps them ultimately graduate, because it's all about, to me, about learning how to read well by the, by the third grade and learning the basics of math and science and then focusing on a career. Those are the metrics to me that will get somebody to graduate. So we're all, and it takes money, and that's why we're doing the the celebration, you know. And it, it to to finish up on the student scholarships, you used to have an entire thick book full of student scholarships, and now of course they're all online. Right, it's all online, so, and yeah. and it's easy to apply. Yeah, there's actually online. one application, and yeah. you can apply for. Uh, um, over a hundred a hundred different scholarships so you just apply once and it's geared we ask questions we know every scholarship so if a scholarship is specific to say a, a, a science student or a student that might be uh, going to uh, nursing school or something like that that's focused we'll ask those questions okay so the, then then the system recognizes that this is a potential candidate for that scholarship and it helps match them yeah, absolutely to the but we still have the judges okay so it categorizes it then we have a cadre of judges just like you were 
were. And those judges get online, they access the system, and they can see the application up there. There's a rubric that they get, and they match it up to the rubric, and they grade it just like you would do at home. I mean, in the old days with yeah. paper, and it automatically tabulates, and it says you, you as a collective unit have picked the following students. Wow, yeah, so that's it, yeah. awesome. So, uh, yeah. and I did that so it's scalable, so we can handle hundreds and hundreds of scholarships. Exactly. I wanted it to grow, you know? And um, so whatever your interests are or whatever your background is, the application itself will help match right. you it actually the shapes ones, to the yeah. to the uh, to the scholarship okay. because it's the donor that very often sets the scholarship yeah. the donor says i want to help a student that's not reading well i want to help a student that worked after after school all the time but still got good grades in the following areas so we would take their their need i want to help a minority student so we take those needs and we plug it into the questions you know, are you a minority are you a science student did you join a science club did, did you, you work? play soccer uh, i remember right. this, oh, yeah, this right. Right. The athletic the ones too. Athletic scholarship, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, so they're all donor really driven. Cool. It's all donor yeah. driven. So not only can is is this good information for parents and grandparents whose children are in their senior year of of school, uh, but it's also good information for businesses. Um, who want to partner with the Education Absolutely. Foundation and sponsor. More, I, I would love more businesses to step forward and, and, and sponsor. And we have a number, but it could grow. I, I, I actually, my dream is to double everything. Okay? Yeah, I don't of know course. if I get there. We all want to double everything. That's the kind of businessman you are. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, another nonprofit organization, when we first started the Sailfish Beer Mile, the year that we did it for Education Foundation, we sponsored several scholarships that were running absolutely, scholarships yes. you were very formative in that yes so absolutely. so that's something that you could do you don't have to commit to doing it for the rest of your life you could do it for a few years yeah and, yeah, yeah, and that's make a, a difference for kids um that's a great point the average scholarship lasts about three to five years yeah you know it, it's, it's mission driven and then and then you've got uh the project Aaron scholarship well that that's rolled in there see that's another project that, that, right the Aaron project scholarship is a terrific scholarship uh, and and that's uh, it has its own organizational structure but they work with us and actually uh, the money flows through the foundation and you help help to guide them we do and, yeah and collect right. the application right our biggest role is to help with the application process and then also help with the uh, because we our system can also help with paying the scholarship out you know, making sure that it's paid out at the right time. Right. So and we have that capability. So because uh, the money usually goes right to the the school. It does, and we yeah. have to know how to get it to the school, yeah. how to validate that the student is in fact enrolled. So we know how to do that over many many years. So we offer that at no cost to our benefit to our donors. Yeah. Well, we we talked about some of the places where the money goes out where you're helping the community, you're helping the students, you're helping the teachers, you're recognizing the teachers. So let's talk about that big fundraiser that you've pivoted. Um, so in past years, for, for more than 20 years, it's been a big, uh, elegant gala ball and uh, auction. And now you are turning it into it's not really the the auction is virtual but the right. rest of the program you still get to enjoy a nice dinner out let's you're talk right. how yeah, you're doing it, it. we struggled with that okay but we wanted to uh to really retain and you mentioned the word elegant okay we wanted to retain the elegance of it so we went out to the to the community to the businesses and we looked at uh, restaurants that have elegant food a really fine food and we talked to uh, Kyle G's, and they're a, a restaurant, a 12A Bowie in Fort Pierce, um, Pasteo's Italian restaurant in tradition, and a brand new restaurant called Meeting Street Steakhouse in tradition as well. That That's taking over Hopcat. Uh, Hopcat, uh, right. yeah, I just so, heard about that. So those four restaurants are yeah. partners with us, and the way it works now is you're gonna buy a ticket for $50, that's a donation to the foundation, but the ticket that we're gonna mail to you is good for $25 off your meal at one of those four restaurants. And then that's a way for us to help those those businesses. It's a way for us to uh, help uh, the uh, help our, our patrons enjoy a really nice meal. And we actually pay that money back uh, to the to the business. Now some of the businesses have said no, don't worry about it. We'll we'll just use it. And as you're a donation. you're fine with that too. We're fine with that too. <laughs> but it's a way for us to say celebrate at your own yeah. time with the own people that you're close to. Have an elegant meal. Think about the education foundation and public education, and then go online, uh, our website, 
and we just switched everything over just like eBay onto a uh, mobile. You can do it with your mobile device or PC or iPad. And we have uh, over 100 items this year. I mean, it's, we're just jam-packed with wonderful baskets from the school district again. We have uh, $2,000 off a brand new Lexus. If you buy a Lexus, you can bid on a coupon that gives you thousands of dollars off a new car. Uh, we have autographed uh, footballs and autographed pictures of movie stars and all kinds of things. Just goes on and on and Some on. Some of my favorite things I've gotten at the Education Foundation Gala Ball at their auction because a lot of times you don't know what you need until you see it. <laughs> right. It, yeah. So we've been busy just knocking on doors, and the public, uh, the businesses have been terrific. I thought maybe, be, oh my goodness, you go to a restaurant and ask them for a gift, uh, a certificate, never was turned down. Every single sure, we'll help you out. And you know, the other thing that we've always done is uh, purchased items at the auction and used it as gift giving. Perfect time. Yes. Actually, the, the event will be for a full month because we want people to have a time to schedule both the dinner as well as look at and, and preview the auction. So it still starts on a historical starting day, uh -huh. which is Saturday, November the 7th, first Saturday of the month. We kept that. But it's going to run all, all the way through Sunday, December the 6th. And that's the opportunity for someone to really have fun during that period of time and be able to look at the auction. And we expect the auction to be constantly um, replenished because we're still getting more items in. So We'll so just are you going to close? Uh, like, is is each It'll, auction item going to have a specific period of time that it's open? W well, for? everything is open uh, once the site goes live. So it's going to go live on on the seventh, and you'll have an opportunity. So visit often. Okay, look at the uh, at the different items and keep bidding. Uh, we're struggling a little bit. Struggling. We're not so sure. It has a buy buy now feature, just uh -huh. like on eBay. Buy yeah. now. We don't know if we're going to do that, but it has that capability. So we're, well, you, we're, can you do the buy now for some of the things? You could. And not yeah, for you others? could. You could. Yeah. There might there might be some things that are like some things if you know that you could actually replace it and get another thing of that item, then it would make sense right, to right, do buy yes. now, and then you can put. You just gave me a great idea because uh, we have several items yeah. that are multiple gifts. I mean, Yay. they say, we'll give you two of these or three of those. So do maybe one at a time. Yeah, that, that's a great idea. Yeah. I'll take that awesome. back to the team. Yeah, thank awesome. you. Um, well, I can't wait to look on uh, the virtual auction, but also I'm ready to buy my tickets because, um, you know, people might say, well, it's only worth $25 at a restaurant. But traditionally, this event is a very expensive ticketed event. So if you're only paying for a couple, $100 for a couple, and $50 of that money is uh, going to be taken off on your meal tab um, at these fine, yeah, uh, 25 well, of it. Yeah. 50 uh, for a couple. Right, exactly. Right, right. You're exactly right. Yeah, 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 the old ticket used to be $150 for a couple. I know. So this is really yeah. a bargain because... You, it's not so physically intense for you guys. Right, you had yeah. to do a lot of legwork to right. get there. But you have a situation where people can, and if you still want to make a little bit of a social thing out of it, you can maybe have a small group of friends. Exactly what we're telling people. You know, yeah. get... Um, Come, come together with groups of individuals that you're comfortable with right. and celebrate public education. You make just go decision, on the website, yeah. buy the tickets, real simple. Yeah. We'll mail it to you. It's good for pretty much a month, right? A month, right. A monthly period. So just go on EFSLC.org. Do you have to decide which restaurant you're going to use it for when you buy the ticket? Nope, nope. It so just has could, the four yeah. on there. You just walk in and uh, just uh, get, get your bill and hand them the ticket. And they'll knock $25 off per person. You per can combine person. them, obviously. So if you all throw them on the table and there's four of you, that's $100 off the, the ticket. And the restaurants are glad are glad for the business. They're very happy for it. They, they are, I'm sure, because they also know that those people who are coming are likely to be bu buying beer or bottles Absolutely. of wine. Right. Yes. Or, they want people to celebrate, know, right? Yeah, they want to be happy. Yeah, yeah. they are. It's That's an excellent idea well, thank you um and we're definitely i was so excited when i saw it um because rather than ask people to make the exception and just come together and wear a mask at a large event where you know traditionally 
it is a large social event where you see people you may not have seen in a year. Right, well, and at some point in time, we had to make a decision, and we didn't know where COVID was going to be. And I said, look, we're just not gonna know. So let's just uh, make this completely virtual. And we're kind of fortunate because there's a little bit of an uptick right now. I think people are a little more concerned. So uh, this yeah. is, uh, we just we just have it totally virtual in a sense that the donor can actually control when they go out and, and where and they go. Where they go. That's yeah, right. and who they're with. Right. And that, I love the idea of the small group. Um, and even traditionally, when people have, uh, when businesses have purchased a table, um, you could still purchase that amount of tickets and invite those people you would have invited to your table. That's if exactly you're right. Yeah, each sponsor, out. based on their level, gets a, a bunch of tickets. So, you know, the. Uh, uh, the gold sponsor will get eight tickets so they can invite their friends, okay? And we have a number of businesses that are going to, you know, uh, take their business, uh, their, their staff and all out to dinner. Their team. Yeah, their yeah. team. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun. And I, I've said to everyone, hey, if you want to invite me along, I'll come. So, you know, I'm going to have to buy a lot of tickets myself, but I'll gladly jump in and have fun with, with all of my benefactors. Yeah, you'll, you'll join in. And there'll be a, a Tom Jones at every yeah. table. Speaking of benefactors, can I mention them? I'm really no, proud of them. No, no. Well, let's well you had mentioned one. The, the title sponsor for the event is PNC Bank, right? You're very familiar with them. Yes, what a they're wonderful so good at giving back to the They community. are. They love early early learning mm -hmm. uh, just so much. A&G Pools, I tell you, what a wonderful local company. Okay, Art Allen is just a wonderful man, and uh, this is the first time they, they, they've, they've been a sponsor of the foundation. And Sandy, of course, the oh, woman Sa behind yeah, the man. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And then Jacqueline and Sons, for many, many years, are yeah. back. Okay, so I'm really proud of PNC Bank, A&G, and Jacqueline. And then we have uh, Bank of America, Seacoast Bank, Mid-Florida Credit Union. That's the banks. That's because I'm a former banker, you know. And then we have uh, Florida Power and Light, really stepped up big time this year, Remnant, and then we have Urgent Care and Bray uh, Commercial Associates, Cleveland Cl Clinic, and Hoskins and Turco. That's Beth Hoskins. Every that year is. reaches out yeah. to me. Tom, well, can can we help you? She's a wonderful well, person. Well, and actually, um, Taylor is now with with Jack. With, Jack, Jack with uh, Hoskins, Taylor Hoskins. Oh, oh okay, is. okay. Is that yeah. right? Okay, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, she is. She's an attorney. With, oh, oh with I see. Uh, James Taylor is with uh, oh. Jacqueline and Company as their yeah. marketing director. Oh, That's what I was thinking okay. You were thinking of a different yeah. Taylor. Different I was Taylor. thinking of Taylor Hoskins, who's a few years older than my children, who I knew from FK Suite. Um, and That's a whole new generation coming yeah, it up, is right? a whole there new generation. That, and it's so great that they are coming back to St. Lucie County, to the Treasure Coast, um, as as young professionals and, and giving back to the community in that way. Um, but, um, and and those those of us who are getting close to the retirement age, we're like ready to hand it over. Right, we're, absolutely. We're, we're ready to celebrate public education by going to dinner and not being the one that's knocking on all the doors anymore. Yeah, you, you know, one of the things that we're realizing with this new effort, I don't think it will continue because we have to socialize, but the metrics are so different that we don't have this big event to, to pay for up front, meaning the caterer. Think of all the money I mean, you're Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it's quite a bit of money, and we're not laying that out. We don't think we'll make as much on the tickets this year because of it's more of a volume game, but I, I think the... Uh, I'll tell you the one thing that we're always going to have, I think, is a, is a is an online component to the auction because I can see people coming to our auction in person with their iPhone rather than a little bid sheet and going on the iPhone and bidding and previewing and then settling right on the iPhone. That's the key. You settle right on the computer. There's and then you, I remember there have been years going to the auction where when you go to leave, it's the worst part. It's, of it right? it is. You yeah. have to stand there for half an hour checking out right. so to be able to check out. I would actually work the crowd and say, Sue Ellen, just go ahead and go. I know I know you're good for it. You know, we'll <laughs> settle later because it's nice getting, you yeah. know, getting long. Yeah. And uh, it was the biggest problem. We struggled yeah. with that. We finally went to uh, the card where we could swipe it, you know, at the point of yes. sale. But it, it was still too long. So but this is ideal. Yeah, you just use your, your yeah. iPhone, your mobile device. You just click out. You'll be settled before you leave. And you, you can buy your tickets online that way too now. You know, Tom, I... It, Everybody has has had to learn new skills in order to deal with the pandemic. But a lot of these things are things that in a, a couple of years when hopefully we're clear and ready to hopefully less than a couple of years, 
be back out and and be social some of these things like you said with the auction you if you do an online component to the auction then even people who aren't able to go to your dinner when you do have a social dinner Absol can participate that's a great point in fact we we have brought back the the live auctioneer leonard wheelie had done it last couple of years so we started the telephone auctioning too so we used to auction off the car okay it's changed a little bit but we used to say you know fourteen thousand dollars for a one-year lease on a car well, we had some people in the audience at the dinner a couple of years ago that we wanted to bid on it, but we know there are other individuals who couldn't come to the dinner who wanted to bid on it. So we had a, just like they do at the auction houses, they had a, a phone and people called in on the phone. So that was the start of it going, well, people don't have to attend the dinner if they can't for some reason. And that's what's going to happen, I think. I think you're absolutely right. The auction will still be, take a look at it, but there's going to be competitors beyond that, that, that room who are going to be looking at the items live, bidding on them, and settling live. So it's going to be very different. It is. So how can people get more information, whether they want to purchase tickets for the dinner and auction? Um, that's uh, $50 per person. Um, you can purchase them through your website. Right. Just go on the website at www.efslc.org. Stands for Education Foundation, St. Lucie County. Just click Evening for Education. There's a little button right there. You can buy your ticket, and also you can look at all of the uh, the auction items. There's, there's a link to our to our website, so it just links right from that page over to the next site. You can see the auction items uh, live. So that that's going to come out on Saturday morning, uh, November the seventh. You'll be able to look at everything, preview it, and then start start your bidding. Can people buy their tickets between now and November 7th? That's a great question. The answer is yes. The, the website is up and live, so you can buy so the ticket buy right tickets. now. You'll be able to preview the the uh, the auction website on on, on, on on the 7th. Right now, our offices look like a studio because we have tables laid out with all this chiffon and black black uh, you know uh, curtain type material, and we're, we're staging all of the items and taking pictures of them. That's so, great. Yeah, so it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, I bet you get to. To see what you want to bid on later too. Right. I probably have the only office building in the school district that has liquor in there because some of <laughs> we have we have wine baskets. Let's and, hope. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of keep that locked up at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> I think Mr. Jet would have a heart attack if I, he knew what was going I on. I think you're probably right. Um, and, but also, you can also get information. How soon can seniors, high school seniors, apply for scholarships? When yeah. does that start? Scholarship opens up in January. Right? Okay. So what happens is uh, right after we pause with the evening for education, this is going to run a little bit, but we're already starting to get questions. So we've already started to reach out to our benefactors to make sure, number one, are they still on if they want to change their scholarship? Because we publish a guide, right, a scholarship mm -hmm. guide, and that's been going on for Oh my goodness! Probably around 20 years, yep. and that guide is a resource to every student that's graduating for a number of scholarships throughout the United States. So they can look at that. That's a free guide, but also explains to the student the steps to take. So that guide needs to be refreshed. So we have to make sure that it, that it's still accurate. So we're doing that today, okay? And then we'll publish that. And once we publish that. And, and then we know the changes that are going to be made to the scholarships. We have to change the system to recognize that. And then we do all of that um, up until uh, January. So sometime around mid-January, the, the website goes live. The website will be live for uh, students to apply for scholarships. And then, uh, you know, you're already working on the educator of the year, the Night of the Stars uh, celebration. Teacher of the Year, the Teacher of the Year celebration. Yeah, that's already, uh, that's in the planning stages. We have meetings every other week. The school district has been right on that. We already have candidates. The school district does this. We're actually just a sponsor. So I'm very lucky. I mean, all the heavy lifting is done by the school district. But we provide the trophies. We provide uh, all, we pay for everything, all the stage decorations. We pay for, like, we bought new curtains that are, you know, micro lit, the micro lights, the digital lights on it the very elegant curtains we purchased those for the school district and then we and how uh, how disappointed are you that they're not going to be able to be seen well, by they'll everyone be seen on television i think we hope <laughs> yeah. we'll be able to see them you know we yeah. actually bought a set that they got ruined in one of the hurricanes they had to buy oh. another set you know it was just a mess but we enjoy it so yeah. but that you know so we're the sponsor of that and uh uh we used to have uh, again we used to have when it was we used to celebrate it with a pre uh, um, 
uh, a dinner, if you will, not a dinner, not a sit-down dinner, but we'd have snacks mm -hmm. just, just before the meeting, and, and we actually sold some tickets for that. That sort of changed last year, but we're not going to do that this year because it's virtual. So there right. are some differences in the way it's working, but we're still there for the, for the school district. Great. And uh, as we move into uh, the spring, as you move past the Night of the Stars, and then you're gearing more into uh, the scholarships as the yeah, well, the yes, and actually last scholarships. year we tried something to snuggle in the spring. We always had this spring pause. We called it. It was called the the uh, Color Fun Run, and we had to cancel it. It's a, it's a, a a program where we, we, we and you're a runner, so you would know yeah. that. But it's a fun run. It's like uh you know. 0.5k or something right. you know but right. the whole idea was you would go out and raise money for your classroom okay the students would i remember seeing that and we would splash you with yeah. the cornstarch color as you yeah. as you made the yeah. laps and the more laps you ran the more money you would raise and uh, the company that ran this, uh, we had to cancel it because it was linked to the safety festival. So that was canceled. So we right. turned that, that in. That was in the end of April. Right. So, so that's that gone. But we actually prime. Right, yeah, mm -hmm. probably does. Anyway, we're, we're, we're not sure if that's going to happen. So I went forward and did a CrossFit challenge. Works the same way. Students right now launch today in, in the school district only. We've got 13 schools that are raising money for their school, and they're doing a, a fun dance kind of video uh, where they could do a video exercise routine, and they could uh, display it on a social media site, and uh, they could raise money to, to, sh to share that with friends. So that's another thing that we do to help the schools directly uh, earn uh, raise money and 80 percent of the money that we raise goes right back to the school district so That's we say to awesome. the school district you don't have to do any work just give us access to the students and what we'll do is we'll help you raise money and most of the money goes back to you because we want the, the school district the individual schools rather to have enough budgetary money for their their favorite projects and those creative juices always have to be flowing in order to come up with the new ideas right, exactly for, and they for, have them they just yeah. don't have the money so yeah. we want to be there for that so so uh, of course we've been talking to Tom Tom Jones, and he is executive director of the uh, nonprofit organization arm of the school district, which is the Education Foundation of St. Lucie. And we've been talking about the different programs that you help to fund or you fund completely, and then also some of the fundraising activities. Um, most uh, Right around the corner, uh, you you have the Night for Education, which is going to be kind of a month for education instead right. of a yeah, night. It's, it's not just an evening. It's a yeah. celebration. It's a full yeah. month, right? And, uh, of course, we, we're talking about the dinner and auction, and you can purchase tickets now, and then you'll be able to use them to uh, eat out between November 7th and uh, December 6th, and you'll also be able to partake of the live auction, of the, the virtual, auction. virtual auction. Exactly. Not That's live. exactly how yeah. it's going to work. Yeah. Um, so it, it sounds like you got a lot of stuff that's on your plate right now. Well, we're busy. We're in season right now, but we get a little bit of a rest. We rest during uh, around Christmas time, and then we get a little rest uh, during the summer. But we're always planning. We're always thinking. And then you get your uh, your breath to to go on for the next creative endeavor. Tom, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. It's been a real and pleasure. And again, if people want to reach the Education Foundation, it's www.efslc.org. Um, and click on Evening for Education if you're interested in purchasing tickets. So, so, sounds like a great plan, and I can't wait to do it. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next week with more. The Sue Ellen Sanders Show with archives on YouTube under WPSL-TV.